Okay, this morning, it is a Thursday. It's a little chilly out there. Some clouds, some showers last night, some snow in the mountains. Mammoth's getting some snow right now. That's as of about 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, surf along the coast has come down a little bit. It comes back up a little bit. Um, the big weather story, I guess, right now would be the snow in the mountains, the traveling up around Lake Tahoe, kind of slow, the times there were change required. And then you've got a wind advisory down towards Santa Barbara and Ventura, where the winds will die down later on this afternoon. Um, what do I got to talk about today? Put the volleyball trophy back. This is, and somebody asked me about this too. This is for some show I did, but it's a national award. So I thought that was kind of awesome. Like, this is 2002, so I was like 19 or something back then. But uh, this is, it's called a Telly Award. But um, I just think the hardware looks cool. Um, and I know it's a little braggy, but I also think the hardware, like in the case of the volleyball player, I think that, uh, which I love that, by the way, but uh, I don't know, it's like, if you don't know me, you go, oh, that guy's been on TV a while, and he won one of those things, right? So it's kind of like, oh, he's got some game. Most of you don't care, but if for the neophyte or someone who's like, hey, what's that guy about? Gives me a little, gives me a little pop. And then this one I am most proud of, this was, God, this is like 2001 or two. So I haven't done anything since the early 2000s, but this is a kitty cat. And I used to work with the animal shelters. I worked with um, the Oakland Animal Shelter getting a pets adopted for years and then I worked with it at CBS in San Francisco in the mornings we would have adopt a pet so I worked with the San Francisco animal shelters and so you know and I'll, I'll just you've heard my dog and you, you probably maybe remember my cat um, Molly but um, my dad's a veterinarian so I grew up with animals and I love uh, I, 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 I mean if you can adopt a pets just do it right because I always I always kind of I get bummed when I see pets that are bred and stuff. I know, I know, and they're beautiful and their animals are beautiful and wonderful, but they're so, when you work down at the shelter, you see all these animals. And the, the fact is about, now I'm going off, but we'll get right to the weather. But animals who, my dad told me this, and again, he's 98, still alive, practiced veterinary medicine until he was almost 90. Um, just he said, you know, pure, pure, purebreds have a tendency to have more issues, right? Because a lot of their immunities and things get kind of bred out of them or their, their resilience. Whereas mutts and stray dogs and, 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 and shelter animals have a tendency to be extremely healthy because they're super robust and, the, the, you know, it's a gene pool thing, I guess. But either way, I mean, if you can find it in your heart, if you're thinking about getting a pet, try to go down to the shelters. So, yeah, that's what that is. And that's what that is. And... This is what this is. Uh, so we got the system going through. Mm. And you can see the yellow. That yellow area here, that represents the cooler, drier air. And you can see it spewing off, the moisture spewing off out into the Intermountain region where they're going to get, they've got some weather coming. We'll talk about that coming up. Uh, in the mountains right now, I just got off the phone with Bill Hudson. He's up at uh, Palisades. They got, like I say, they got two to three inches of snow overnight. Snowing right now up at uh, Echo or Donner Summit or Soda Springs. Snowing pretty handily, right? So for being in the Bay Area, this is again around nine o'clock this morning. Um, that's snowing pretty good. So that's on the north side of Lake Tahoe. Let's go to the south side down to, this camera sometimes befuddles me. This is uh, down by Incline. Um, oh, I should know where this is. Sierra Tahoe. Oh, Sierra Tahoe. Well, there you go. It's on 50, and you can see folks going skiing. It's a little wet. It's The snow is, uh, that, one of the reports I got from um, Truckee today was the snow is just a little bit wet. Ma'am, if you're crushing the snow right now, it is coming down. This is a camera I thought I'd throw in just because it's uh, Vegas. It's windy in Vegas. Ooh, look at the dust blowing. I think I just saw a bunch of dust blowing. This is 15. Um, I think it's US 15, it's state line, and that's a windy day when you got the camera blowing like that. So there's wind advisories around, and then we've got, let's see where we're going now. We're going to San Francisco, and let's see, I'll bring it all the way around. Here are some alto cumulus clouds. This is how it looks today. This is how it's going to look most of the day today. It's a little breezy, a few light scattered showers around the Bay Area. This is one of my favorite cameras. This is um, Mount Tam. And we'll start it off in the morning, and it's foggy. This is Mount Tam looking back towards San Francisco, and you see the clouds coming in. 
Beautiful. I love living on the coast because you get, you know, all this air coming off the Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles of Pacific blue ocean, clean air. It's about as clean as any air as any urban center, San Francisco. I mean, air quality in that town is awesome because, again, it's the air is, I mean, there's stuff in the air that goes all around the globe, but... You, you know, if you live in Chicago, you're breathing what happened in Denver a day ago, right? But when you when you live here, you know, Japan's a, a, a couple of days away with the airflow. So you have a chance to clean out that air through rain showers and wind and what have you. All right. So that's my little uh, bit there. There is uh, Mount Tam. This is, remember where you are, Willie? This is uh, Rincon. Isn't that interesting? I don't think I can roll on this one, but that's out towards... Um, uh, oh, no, no, pardon me. This is not. This is out by, um, oh my gosh, uh, San Luis Obispo. Isn't that beautiful? And you can kind of see the weather system clearing out if you go back to here, right? And if you look where San Luis Obispo is, there it is, it clearing out right there. So let's see, we go to there, we go to there, we got San Luis, now we go to the models. Okay, so here is the uh, GFS. We're used to looking at this, and I think that's valuable. Are there other models? Yes. Are all the models to be taken um, verbatim? No. One of the things that drives me crazy about forecasters, and, and anybody, because we all have access to this stuff, it's don't it's a it's a guideline, man. The models are guidelines. They're not that this model was run. Actually, I had to run the I think I had to run the 12Z or what is this? This is the 12Z, yeah. Um, but I the models take a while to to produce the the output. So all the data f comes in right twice a day, and the model takes a, n a number of hours depending on what the model is to spit out the end result because there's bazillions, well, not really, but there's a lot of equations that have to get crunched together. So by the time you're looking at this, that's old data, right? So don't ever, don't, and no matter what anybody tells you, I mean, there's probably, uh, some with AI, I think the models are gonna get super granular. No, they're not, especially the GFS. This is just a, this is a guideline. And that's, if when in any model you're looking at as of uh, 2025, just use them as a guideline. So here we go. Now, you know what you don't use as a guideline? The pictures. The pictures are what's happening, okay? But these are what could happen and what initiated a few hours prior, sometimes six hours prior. So here we go. This is, I'll put a loop around us right here. And we go, 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 go. And then we go, that's this afternoon. Southern California, San Diego, maybe a few scattered showers, the wind, and then they're down towards, uh, well, right down towards San Diego again, somewhere around late tonight, early tomorrow morning, you get a little pop. And then there is your weekend around Oregon, California, San Diego. Isn't that nice, nice looking weekend? We're all the way into Sunday now. Temperatures today, by the way, it, around the entire state are 50s. I mean, San Diego, you'll get up to like 62, right? So temperatures are gonna be kind of on the cool side for everybody. And then our next brush, again, centered more south of San Francisco. This is uh, Monday morning. And then that, look at it, just pushes right into San Diego, which and you guys, right, you need the rain, so that's good. This is Tuesday morning, a little bullseye again. And then we get into a progressive series. This is Wednesday morning, the March 12th. That looks money. Look at that, right? Now, oh, but it's just a guideline. But it's it's a that that bullseye, you can kind of that's going to be somewhere within a hundred miles of that of that spot, right? And then I got kind of excited when I saw that. So that looks like our big hit. That that is get a little something, but before that, but here is Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Okay, now we can look at the total accumulations. Remember, this is just adding on. So nothing, 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 weekend, nothing going on. Now we're into Sunday, now we're into Monday, now we're into Tuesday, Southern California. Look at you getting all that rain. Uh, it's a lot, a couple inches of rain in San Diego. Burn scars are gonna get an inch and a half. And then that's that system we were looking at. And that thing loads up. That's Wednesday, late night into Thursday morning. Okay, so guidelines, not to be taken verbatim. But if I look at that footprint of, okay, just total accumulation over the next 13 days or so. I'm like, okay, yeah, it makes sense. San Diego's pretty heavy though, right? For, for, for a couple of days. Okay, so this is San Francisco's Ocean Beach. The surf is 
manageable today, but big. And it's going to stay kind of up and down. Ocean Beach around 6 to 10 foot, eight, 7 to t 8 to 10, I don't know. It's, it's good size. It's pretty breezy all along the coast right now. Um, La Jolla's even got a little wind. This is down in San Diego. Temperatures down there right now are in the 50s. It'll end up in the low 60s today. La Jolla is... Uh, beautiful. You know, one of the things that's interesting about San Diego, and I'll just make this quick as we look at, uh, well, let's stay looking at San Diego. If you read much about California history, when the state first was formed, it, you know, certainly after it became part of the Union, when, you know, you know, Fremont was running around and all that, um, it was being sold. California was something you sold because they were trying to get, especially when the Transcontinental Railroad went in. But you, they wanted people, the East wanted people out here to begin the com to grow. The country wanted people out here to begin to grow. So in the East Coast, the Industrial Revolution had sort of just been taken off, right? Late 1800s. And they were realizing that cities were making people sick. I just, one of you guys just sent me a note that you finished two years before the mast. That, uh, Richard Henry Dana went from New York out west to get healthy. That was sort of the vibe, right? And then if you think about San Diego, it's fascinating to me. You think about San Diego, San Diego is a place people used to go to recover from all sorts of things. It was like, it was billed as, they realized sunshine, the water. They, they, they had realized that in the East that they had pinned themselves into this environment that was super unhealthy. So they started shipping people west. Now. A lot of that was salesmanship because you wanted to grow these communities. The United States wanted to grow the country. Mulholland wanted to grow L.A. Um, all these different, you know, like, like think about um, oh, up in Chico, Richardson Springs. That was a health spa. There were health spas up in the Napa and the Russian River that these geysers up at the geysers, this water was super healthy. So California has always been, and I'm pointing to San Diego because San Diego, my, my dad's mom, he's 98, she died really young. They put him and mom, his mom on a ship from San Francisco. To, she was dying of breast cancer. And they sent her down, them down to um, San Diego. And then she passed down there. But isn't that interesting? Like that was the last resort. It was kind of like maybe sometimes people go to Mexico to get treatments they can't get here. Well, I think that's kind of what San Diego was as we look at La Jolla. So I'm sure you'll have an opinion on that, but I just, I, it's a fascinating thing about California. And when I say it was a sales job, it really was. Like a, another example is the Sutter Buttes. Sutter Buttes are billed as the smallest mountain range in the world. Well, that's not true. And the, I tried to track it down because they don't measure mountain ranges. So you don't know. They're probably, you know, it's just, but that's what somebody, some salesman said, hey, listen, Move to the Central Valley, you can grow all the wheat you want, and you're close to the smallest mountain range in the world. It was all about salesmanship. Uh, it's fascinating. And Hollywood was about salesmanship. Oh, California is so interesting. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here's a llama. Tip of point conception. Um, used to be part of the Bixby Ranch. Then they gave it over to the state. And now it's a beautiful beach park. And it sits at the tip of point conception. You, I've seen, I've surfed out here a bunch, and I've seen whales right in right off the coast i mean they because it's deep deep water a lot of sharks but deep deep water out there so the whales come in really really close okay so that is our story for today thank you so much for bearing with me i love all you new subscribers thank you so much i appreciate the comments too um the california thing is interesting you guys i mean we live in an interesting place and i am super i guess because my dad's still around he's 98 right so i still ask him stories he's kind of losing a step or two but I, I'll ask him, I go, well, do you remember this? Do you remember that? I mean, they, he was around when automobiles were kind of a new thing, when TVs were a new thing, when radio was kind of a new thing, and the city was growing, and right after the earthquake, and he actually knew Civil War, Civil War veterans, old guys. But isn't that crazy? So California's awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, going off. Today is, I'm going to go surf today. I'm kind of stuck. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to render it. Then I'm going down to, uh, I think I'll go to Santa Cruz just because it's... Uh, it's fun size. Okay, see you back here.